Good morning. On behalf of the family, I want to welcome you to the service today as we honor and celebrate the life of Valerie. And on behalf of the family, I want to tell each one of you, thank you for taking time out of your day to be here today. And uh, I believe that if Valerie could be here, she'd uh, be thrilled that you'd come. And um, so thank you uh, for being here as uh, we celebrate her life. Today is a, it's a sad day for the life of, and the lives of uh, the family and friends. But at the same time, I believe that after talking with Frank and Tommy, uh, they want it to be a day of celebration, a day of celebrating her life, a life that uh, touched many, many people and touched many other lives. And uh, so we appreciate you being here. Valerie Bain Sykes went home to be with her Savior Tuesday evening, August 31st, 2021, at the hospice house, uh, Satilla, following an extended illness. She was a native and long, uh, lifelong resident of Ware County. She resided in the Satilla Solutions Program of the Easter Seals of South Georgia, from 2013 until 2020. She was preceded in death by her mother, Sandra Lightsey Sykes, maternal grandparents, Harry and Ava Jean Lightsey, and paternal grandparents, Frank and uh, Janita Sykes, all of Claxton, Georgia. Valerie was a 1995 graduate of the Ware County High School, where she, and she worked as a greeter with Kroger for six years prior to 2003. Valerie was very active in the Miracle League and participated in softball games. She was a member of the Bold Church. Her survivors include her father, Frank Tommy Sykes, sister Amy Sykes Woodard, and her late husband, Christopher, brother Frank Sykes, and wife Courtney. She had many nieces and nephews, Colby Woodard and his wife Kate, Mary Beth Woodard and Gracie Woodard, Maya Sykes and Madison Porter, and her adopted grandmother, Beth Woodard and her husband, Ronnie. Let's go to God in prayer and ask the Lord to bless in the services here today as we honor the life in the memory of Valerie. Heavenly Father, as we come to you here this morning, God, we uh, come before you as needy people. God, there's uh, people here today that are broken. There's people that are gathered here today that, Lord, uh, they have emptiness in their hearts like they've never had before. Lord, uh, they just need comfort, but I thank you that you are the God of all comfort, so I ask you, God, that as only you can, would you comfort the hearts and the lives that are gathered here today? Lord, I ask you, would you fill the empty spot that's there? God, I pray that you'd give strength to the family, Lord, to get through all of the things which they'll face today. Lord, I pray that you'd fill our hearts with gladness, dear God, as we think and remember on the good, wonderful memories of the time that you've allowed each individual to spend with Valerie. Lord, I pray that this morning that Jesus Christ would be lifted up, that he'd be honored and he'd be glorified as we remember and honor the life of one of your dear saints, Valerie. Lord, I pray that you would especially be with Frank this morning as he'll have a major part in this service. God, I pray that you'd give him strength and Lord, just help him. I pray that you'd bless now. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tell me what does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain?
Everybody, I want to thank you for coming out today uh, on behalf of my family and I. I uh, hope I make it through this. I've had a lump in my throat since Wednesday of last week, and it's back. Um, I'm not a public speaker. I'm sure they're not a pastor, and this is going to be sort of unconventional. Um, but we, we thought it was a shame of somebody that you know, didn't grow up with Valerie, didn't get up and speak, and... A lot of her friends have passed away or are very sick and we're in very weird times now. And so I said I would get up and talk and uh, there's just a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff that Valerie did I want to touch on and some of it may even be funny because Valerie was a funny person. If you're here, you knew her and you know that she had a great sense of humor and um, you know she liked to cut up and even till her <laughs> very end I'll touch on this but we we roasted each other back and forth I mean to the very end we, she had a good time and laughed and cut up and uh, my sister Amy picked that song we just played Dancing in the Sky we thought it was very fitting we didn't want to um, you know we wanted some, it's hard to find something to sum up somebody that's so I hate to use a generic word but special you know Valerie um, I'm going to use the phrase handicapped person. That's what people used to, she's just a handicapped girl, and I'm going to say that sarcastically several times because my sister lived a very, very normal life, you know, and she overcame a, a lot. She, uh, she did a lot of really cool stuff, man, that I just, it, it's, we have to talk about. Um, and I, and I was trying to find even a, a, a Bible verse. You know, you look to the Bible sometimes for, for peace or for the right word. And like I said, I'm no pastor, so forgive me. But 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And my sister had all three. Um, she definitely... She had faith. You know, we, as a family, we never really, uh, 
pushed her or pulled her. We let her make her own life, her own decisions, and that was always very important to us. You know, we never, and she called us one time and said, uh, <laughs> I don't know what y'all are doing, but I'm getting baptized Sunday. You know, <laughs> and uh, it was very nonchalant with Valerie. You know, she chose her own path, and I. So I'm not. I, I'm not gonna sit here and, and and pretend this and that. Valerie did that completely on her own. You know, and and you know that was a joy for us, and we were able to, you know, know. And and I mean, you, you, sometimes when people pass away, you say, well, they're going to heaven because they're going to heaven because. I, and if there is anybody that deserves to go to heaven, it is this girl. She. I would be willing to bet no one in this room can say one bad thing about Valerie, not one. The second part was hope, which was even us and Valerie. You know, Valerie was born with a disability, and they said, well, she'll never be a teenager. She'll never, if she lives to be eight, ten years old, she'll be doing good. And she passed away six hours short of her 46th birthday. You know, that's, that's a testament. And she always had hope. You know, she had over 50 surgeries in her life. And I think it was harder on us than it was her. She would, uh, you know, she rolled with the punches better than anybody. And um, one time she got sp spinal meningitis. And they can't get, can't get rid of it, can't get rid of it. You know, and she was non-responsive. In Valerie's true fashion, she woke up and was just, you know, I don't, I wasn't there to what she said, but it was probably bring me some Taco Bell or something like that or a Dr. Pepper, you know. Um, and love was the most important, as the as it says, you know. Um, I think we saw Valerie's handicap more than she did, you know. She just loved people. She loved being around everybody. And, uh, and you can tell by all the people in the room here. She, was, uh, she loved everybody. And um, she, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right way to word it, but she always lived her truth, you know, who she was. And she's a very gritty person. And my family is a very gritty people. I mean, we, we're very... We're very tough people, you know. You know what our family's been through even before this. And, and uh, Valerie was probably the toughest of all of us. I mean, she, I don't know how she never had a bad day, you know. I have them all the time. And she, she would tell me I was being a brat. That was her favorite word for me. That was my name up until I was 40 years old. I was a brat. And, uh, and you know, growing up, we treated Valerie just like everyone else. We, um, we never really wanted a baby or too much, you know, and, and, and I think that's, uh, that was important, you know, and she loved, she loved music, and I want to say a couple of funny stories about that. We, her two favorite songs were Prop Me Up by the Jukebox and she's in love with the boy. We couldn't play those, obviously, at the funeral, but it would be a shame if I didn't touch on it because Amy and I were driven crazy by these songs. Um, she, she listened to She's in Love with the Boy so many times, uh, she would hit repeat and lay down where it would just continuously play. And one time I busted in a room and threw it out the window because we, it was driving us crazy. I have not heard that song in over 20 years. And the night she passed, I listened to it on the way home and ugly cried all the way home. And I was like, I love, hate this song so much. Um, her, her famous saying is, uh, if, if she caught you babying her too much or treating her different, she would say, I'm handicapped, not helpless. You know, like that. I can do that. You know, will you move, you know, or whatever. Get out of my way. Talk to the hand, even. You know, she was very sassy. And uh, it's, she's a spitfire, as my friend Jason said. That's, that's kind of my whole family. We're just like that. Um, and it, a lot of my friends say, uh, you're, you're so good at jokes. You're so good at firing back at people. And when I was sitting down to write this, I realized I got that from Valerie because... 
she never gave me a break. I mean, she loved me, but she, lo- I mean, you didn't walk around her wearing an ugly shirt, you know, or anything like that. She would say, that shirt is ugly. You need to go change, you know. And, and I sort of developed her sense of humor, and, and I, I thank her for that, you know. And, um, but we used to get her back. We, uh, <laughs> this may be wrong to say this here, but it's too funny of a story, and I want to share it with you. It was a few Christmases back. We decided we were going to get Valerie good, and uh, we, we got a bottle of grape juice. You know the story. We told her, we said, Valerie, this is wine. It's very good wine. And Valerie, boy, she would sneak off. And, and we'd come over there and say, Valerie, what's wrong? She says, I just drank too much wine. And we had a good laugh. We finally told her that it was grape juice. And uh, she was so mad at us for getting her, but she... But she had it coming. She, she burned us so many times. Every Christmas or any time we were together, she would have a joke for us that she would get us with. And, you know, we had to, we had to zing her at one good time there. And uh, um, my parents worried about Valerie constantly and probably even more than they needed to because, like I said, Valerie was so independent um, I remember the doctor telling my dad one time, he said, well, I don't know what to do. She isn't normal. And my dad said, well, well what is normal? You know, um, I remember um, Valerie going to high school. She graduated. And um, after mom passed away, she became even more independent, which was I couldn't fathom. You know, we worried so much about Valerie, you know, and she had her own apartment and she... I remember when I found out she had a checking account, and I said, what are you doing with a checking account? She said, what am I supposed to do with a checking account, Frank? You know, I pay my bills. What do you, what do you, what do you think I'm doing? Um, and and it's, uh, she always had a good comeback. Um, I'm sorry, I actually wrote a novel for this, and I had to concise it down to just a few pages. Uh, I would be here for two hours. It's hard to... It's hard to sum up 46 years with a special person. Um, I couldn't find the exact quote, but my dad told me there's a quote that says, the tallest man is the one that leans down to help someone in need. I don't know who it's by because I couldn't find it. Um, But Valerie's on the other side of that saying. we all know she was part of the Miracle League, and she worked at Kroger and things like that. And But did you know Valerie gave to charity? Nobody gives to charity. I mean, I'm not being funny. I mean, a lot of people don't. My sister gave to charity. She uh, A few years ago, she won, she won some money and something and never even touched it. She gave it to the Humane Society, I believe it was. I mean, that's a testament to, to her, you know. And uh, we're, so, we're so keen to not look out for other people, but she's always concerned about everyone else. And, uh, and it shows because when she passed, I've never seen that many people contact my family, call me, text me, Amy, Dad, you know, they would, uh, when I posted something on Facebook about her passing away, I've never seen that many people respond to anything ever, you know. And it was almost like national news, which is awesome because you know she touched, she touched a lot of people. And I wanna, I wanna say, just remember, she lived her truth. She lived her life. She enjoyed who she was. And my message is, don't get caught up in your shortcomings in life and what you haven't accomplished, what you haven't done. Like I said, she, she was along for the ride. She had a good time every single day of her life. She had a good time, even if she was sick, even if it didn't matter. She had a good time. Um, even, even when she was in hospice house, uh, me and one of my very close friends, we went in there and we were, you know, just jabbing her, giving her a hard time, you know, and at that point she couldn't really talk, but she would draw her mouth up like, oh, I'm going to, you know, like I'm going to hit you guys. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's how she was. She truly enjoyed people. And I think we've gotten away from that as a society. We've gotten away from really loving each other and, and enjoying each other's company because we're all in this together whether you know it or not. You know, it's, uh, 
And we all need each other, whether you know it or not. And we needed Valerie more than she needed us. She, uh, she was a, you know, I've battled with depression and things like that, but I could always look and say, she is happy. You know what I mean? There, there's, there's nothing wrong with my life. There's something wrong with me if I can't be happy. And, and that's important to think about, too. You have to look internally because I haven't lived, I haven't had nearly the stuff happen to me that Valerie did, and she smiled every single day. I, I can't stress that enough, you know, how great that was. We, I'm way off note, by the way, but I don't care. I just, um, that's going to stay with me the rest of my life, and I want, I want it to stay with you as well. You know, she just, uh, we're going to have hard times. Even this is hard for us, but, you know, if Valerie was here, she would say, why are you upset? You're being a brat, you know? <laughs> the ones of you laughing know, you know, how she would be. Um, you know, I was talking about some of our family that's passed away, and, um, you know, my mother and my grandmother are there, you know, with open arms, you know, for Valerie. My Uncle Daryl, he's there with jokes already. And this is kind of for the family, but, you know, Uncle Daryl's there with jokes. He's already, re he's already ready for that. Um, Uncle Donald's ready there to play a prank on her. I can already see that because he liked to cut up with her. Aunt Mary is going to be the second mother showing her around. Aunt Franquette's going to be telling her funny stories and making her laugh. And Uncle Jimmy will be there just watching over her. You know, it's, uh, you, you get to a point where you've got just as many special people on the other side as you have here. And, and it's a blessing that Valerie has that. She's got plenty of people on the other side, you know, that's, and, and they're there with her now, and that's comforting to us. Um, And Valerie was born with spina bifida, okay, which is, which touching back is, we were told, you know, she doesn't have long, you know, she could go at any time. We don't know how this is going to affect her and this, and it's complications from that or whatever. And I don't know if you know this, but she didn't pass away from anything, com any complications from spina bifida. She never did. Um, she beat COVID. She beat a lot of other things that, we, I mean, and, she was very sick for a long time with, 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 with this disease, but she, she overcame her handicap. It did not take her out. And I used to joke with people, I'd say, my sister is the toughest person that's ever lived. If she had use of her legs, I would teach her to be a cage fighter because she's the toughest woman I've ever met in my life. And uh, God knows, we, me and Amy know, if you got her too riled up, she would grab you and put her hands on you. She would not... She didn't take a whole lot of, whole lot of mess off people, um, and uh, in her last days, her, uh, I remember the nurses telling us maybe three days before she passed, they said we can't even find her pulse. You know, we, um, we don't know why she's still here. You know. She's just, she's hanging on for some reason. And uh, we were taking rotations at the hospice house. You know, Amy would stay the night, you know, then I would come the morning, dad in the afternoon. We always made sure somebody was there with her at all times. And in true Valerie fashion, after one week, the three of us are gone for 30 minutes and she passed away. She did not she did not want to put that burden on us. And I truly believe that because she held on by a thread until the very, till it was time, you know, and I guess she was like, well, I'm not going to put them through this. I'm going to, um, I'm going to wait till they all leave. And <laughs> we had a good week with her. We um, told a lot of jokes, gave her a hard time. In fact, uh, one of the last things Valerie said to me, I, I bent down by her bed to do something. And she goes, you've got a big bald spot on top of your head. <laughs> and I said, well, you haven't, I said, well, you're kind of short. You haven't seen the top of my head in a long time, you know, and uh, 
And, and, and like I said, she, she passed away six hours before her 46th birthday. And I said, Valerie, you're turning 46 and I'm turning 40 in the next two days. I said, um, I said, you know, if you're 46, you round up to 50. So you're an old lady now. And she just kind of, er, just kind of just grunted at me. And, uh, and I guess she, she won, you know, she said, I'm, I'm, I'll show you. And that she, uh, she would get a kick out of that. And like I said, she would, she would tell everyone, y'all stop being a brat and being upset. She's, uh, she's having a good time. And like always, like true Valerie fashion, she's, no matter where she was, she had a good time. And, um, you know, she used to, uh, she used to, whenever she was very ill, she would spend six to eight months at a time up in Augusta and, uh, you know, so it, it would be a, almost a homecoming for us every time she would come home. You know, we haven't saw her in forever. But she would always come back in a good mood, and she would always be happy. And whenever we got her moved to hospice, we were in there, and she said, when I saw Waycross, I put my hands, I said, thank you, Jesus. I am back in Waycross. I'm back home. And, uh, you know, so she always had a good time with that. And, and you know, we had a lot of people... And some of you are here today. I'm not going to call all of you out, but you really helped my family a lot. And uh, during the times Valerie was gone, even you know Beth and John Spalding were were very close to us. They helped us a lot. Even today, they call they would call and check on Valerie all the time. And you know Beth Woodard, and Tina Timmon, and Barbara Miller. All of you guys were you were very special to Valerie. And I'm sorry if I missed anybody, but. I'm kind of coming off track here, but, um, you know, they say it takes a village or whatever to, to, to raise a child, but in, in a way, Valerie kind of raised us, you know, she got us straight and, you know, um, she really had an impact on me personally and a lot of other people that is really made me who I am today. Um, she kept me grounded a lot, and um, but once again, I want to say she she lived her truth. She lived her life so she for her happiness and you know the happiness of people around her, and that's that's a very important message. And um, I want to read some lyrics. Uh, one of my favorite musicians, David Berman. Um, he had a song and it may come off a little weird but I'll explain it in the song it says the dead know what they're doing when they leave this world behind when the here and the hereafter are momentarily align you see the need to speed until the lead suddenly decline the dead know what they're doing when they leave this world behind and as much as we might like to seize the reel and hit rewind or quicken our pursuit and what we're guaranteed to find. When your dying's finally done and your suffering subsides, all the suffering gets done by the ones we leave behind. And I thought that it just floored me. I've listened to that song a million times and never thought about it. And uh, it, it's basically saying, go to heaven, but don't be in a hurry. You know, enjoy your time here. Um, you're gonna leave your suffering here. You know, just as Valerie did. You're gonna leave your suffering here and, and all the suffering is to be done by the ones we leave behind. Um, my family, we want to thank you all for coming. And uh, like I said, every one of you are special to us, special to Valerie. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I was lucky in a way that we had to push this funeral back for you know different reasons or whatever because I don't think I could have done this Friday like it was originally supposed to be I've had some time to reflect and everything and you know uh, but don't don't forget Valerie is what I ask because she really was a beacon of of hope let me go back to my notes. Faith, hope, and love. Um, 
the three most important things, and most of all, love. Um, Valerie loved everybody, even the ones like me that got on her nerves. She loved me, and it's hard to love everybody, but you're supposed to, and, and she did. And uh, so anytime you're having a tough time in your life or whatever, I want you to think of my sister and somehow how she could be happy for 46 years, you know, being told, you can't, you won't, you won't make it. And she did. And that's very important. That's an important lesson for us more than anything. And uh, after this, we're going to, uh, my family's from Claxton, Glenville area. We're going to uh, Beards Creek at 3 o'clock today for anyone that can make it. And I know it's a long drive, but we wanted Valerie buried next to her mother and her grandmother. And um, we want to thank you guys. I want to close uh, a very good friend of mine, a very old friend of mine. I don't mean old, just been friends a long time. Uh, Lauren actually plays in a band with me, and Lauren's going to get up, and we're going to... I was going to try to sing Amazing Grace, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not a singer. I can't. I've tried before. I can play any instrument, but I can't sing. And, uh, and that would just be one more thing for Valerie to laugh at me for, trying to sing, because she would. She would look down on me and be like, you can't sing. I told you, because she told me many times I can't sing, and I needed to stop. Um, but Lauren, if you'll come up, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. You're welcome to sing along, and uh, thank you so much.
I want to read a portion of scripture, just a few verses. They're not the verses that I'm going to speak on, but I thought they'd be fitting. Jesus was preparing to go away. He was preparing his disciples. He was telling them, I'm not always going to be here. And, uh, and there were some things they wouldn't understand. They would be brokenhearted. They would be hurt. There would be an empty spot uh, in their lives. And so one of my favorite passages of Scripture, John 14, verse number 1, Jesus was speaking to those disciples, and he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And I was thinking as Frank was speaking here this morning, he made mention that in, in her timing, when, when you and Amy and, and Tommy weren't there, I believe it was Miss Beth that was there. As much as it was perhaps her timing, more than that, I believe it was God's timing. I believe it was God saying, everything's ready come home. And uh, I thought about those words and how comforting they are. I didn't get an opportunity to, to know Valerie. I, I believe I got to meet her on one occasion, but I really didn't get to know her the way that many of you knew her, especially the way the family knew her. But after talking with family this week, I met with some on Thursday and, and uh, just wanted to know more about her. I wanted to know her more personally through you guys, through your family. And, and uh, from what I've come to know about her, I believe that we could all agree that we could easily describe her with just one word. Frank mentioned special. And I think that'd probably be very appropriate. But I believe that from what I've come to understand from all of the testimonies I've heard about Valerie, I believe that we could sum up Valerie's life, her person, with one word, and that is precious. I believe that when we examine the life of Valerie and we think about the time uh, that each one got to spend with her and and to know her, I, I believe that everybody could walk away today and say, if there was just one word, she was precious. And uh, matter of fact, just last night here at the funeral home, I was speaking with somebody and uh, this statement was made, she was a precious soul. And uh, I got thinking, there's a verse in the Bible, uh, in the book of Psalms, in Psalm 1, 16, verse 15, the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. And as much as you and I may consider Valerie to have been a very precious person, I want you to know, in the sight of her creator, she was precious. Valerie was not only precious to those who knew her, but to her Savior, the one who created her. I think about, there's a verse in the book of Jeremiah in chapter number 1, the Old Testament. Verse number 5, the Lord spoke these words and he was speaking them to Jeremiah, but I believe they can be applied to Valerie this morning. The Lord said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Boy, that's a comforting thought. I think about Valerie. And I think about the folks that didn't know her perhaps would, would, would refer to it as the thing she struggled with. But from what I've come to understand, it really wasn't her that did much of the struggling. She was an overcomer. And she would overcome many of the things that she would be faced with. And though she was born with spina bifida, the Lord knew her. Before he ever formed her in the belly, he knew her. And he knew her condition. 
but yet she was still precious in his sight. Now this morning and over the last 40 years, people that would, 45 years, people would get to know Valerie. Some might would question and ask why. Why spina bifida? Why, uh, why the things that she would struggle with and uh, physically the, the suffering she would endure? This morning, I can't answer all of the whys. But I believe with all my heart, the Lord had a plan. And it may be hard for us to understand, but I, I can't help but believe that according to the scriptures and hearing what I've heard about Valerie, I, I believe that God used spina bifida to mold her character, to mold her sense of humor, to mold her into the person that God wanted her to be so that she could have the impact and the effect on the lives in which she did have. When I think about Psalms 116 and that verse in verse 16, precious on the side of the Lord is the death of his saints. You and I, we may not consider death to be precious and that's because we look at it differently than how God does. You see, God knew everything about Valerie even before he formed her in the belly. I believe he knew her beginning all the way to her end. He knew everything about her. And she was precious to him. And as precious as Valerie was to Mr. Tommy, you and your wife, and Frank and Amy, your family, and, and even those nieces and nephews, oh, she's so much more precious to the Lord. And you may be wondering, how could it be precious in the sight of the Lord, the death of his saints? Well, I want to share with you four very brief thoughts. Number one, her death, her homegoing is precious because of the person who passed. You say, what do you mean by that, preacher? Well, I want you to know this, that, ain't, that, that, that Valerie wasn't just any woman, she was not just any girl, she was not just any lady, she wasn't just any person. But according to her testimony, which I've heard from others tell me, she was a child of God. Frank made mention that they didn't push her in one direction or another as far as church or religion or things like that. And by the way, it does no good to push anybody. Because a relationship with the Creator, a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ has to be a personal relationship. It's not a relationship that I can force upon somebody and make them take up, but it's a relationship in which they must willingly choose for themselves. Think about when Tommy told me Thursday about that Sunday morning, he got a phone call, he was getting dressed, and Valerie called and said, what are you doing, Dad? And he said, well, I'm getting ready to go to church. And she said, so am I, and I'm getting baptized. And he said, are you? He, he told me, he said, I didn't even realize that she was walking down the road to church. She'd been walking to church. You know what that was? That was a decision that she had made. That was a purpose that she made, that, that going and spending time at the Lord's house on Sunday was important to her. I think about a story that uh, just... Uh, a few days before Valerie went home that Kate shared with me. She was the only one there with her at that moment. And Kate shared with me that she was burdened knowing that Valerie wouldn't be here long. And, and she said, Preacher, I just had to know. I just had to know. So she said Valerie was coherent. She was talking. And, and uh, she said, uh, Valerie, I need to ask you a question. Valerie said, what is it? Kate said, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? And she said, Valerie just started laughing. <laughs> and Kate said, I, I thought, did I say something wrong? She was thinking within herself. And she's laughing at the question, and it's a serious question. And she said, Valerie said, oh, Kate, yes, I know I'm going to heaven. She said, don't you know the Lord Jesus came to this world to die for my sins so that I could be saved and go spend eternity with him? 
I don't know about you, but that's about as plain as a good testimony that anybody could ever give. And you know how she knew that? Because she placed her faith in the Lord Jesus. The Bible tells us in John 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I believe by Valerie's testimony, there was a time that she believed that Jesus came and Jesus died. And that he rose again and sent it back into heaven. By her own testimony, she believed that Jesus did that for her. And you know what that made her according to the scriptures? It made her a child of God. Valerie's home going was precious to the Lord because, Mr. Tommy, is, you said your goodbyes. Her heavenly father was giving her her welcome. Welcome home. Welcome home. The Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. The very moment that Valerie took her last breath, she went to be with Jesus. A second reason why it was precious for Valerie to go home to be with her Savior was the price that was paid for her. The shed blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 verse 18 and 19, For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, in order for Valerie to go and spend eternity with her Savior, there had to be a price that was paid. And I believe if Valerie could come and speak to us today, I believe she would tell you, that price wasn't just paid for me, but Jesus paid that price for you also, so that you also could become a child of God so that you also can have your sins forgiven. I believe that if Valerie could come back, I believe she'd be quoting scripture. I believe one of the verses she'd probably share this morning would be John 14, 6. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. She'd tell you Jesus is the only way to be saved. He's the only way to go to heaven. Matter of fact, in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Valerie would say, I'm not in heaven because of me, but I'm in heaven because of him. Amen. I'm in heaven because of what Jesus has done on my behalf. Thirdly, another reason why the homegoing of Valerie's precious to the Lord is because the place that she's gone, it's home. I thought about this even Thursday as uh, Mr. Tommy, you and Amy and the girls were sitting in my office and we were talking and uh, Frank made mention of it this morning about when uh, it, it had been a year that she was down in Jacksonville in the hospital fighting uh, that, that illness that she had for so long. And she just wanted to come home. She wanted to be home. And uh, that day that Amy and Mr. Tommy were there and talking to her, and she just expressed it so clearly that she just longed for home. And they got out in the car, and even right there in the parking lot, I believe, you got on the phone and started making the arrangements. And Frank shared about whenever they came into Waycross, as she's riding there, she's seen the sign for Waycross. And thank you, Jesus. Well, I don't know for sure, but I believe she wanted to be home because she wanted to be around her family. Because she knew this really wasn't home yet, but she would soon be going home. And she wanted to spend those last days with her family that she loved so dearly. I think about 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 6, 7, and 8. The Bible says, Therefore we are always confident knowing that. Whilst we are home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 
I submit to you this morning, Valerie's home. She's home. I can't help but imagine, and I guess I could only imagine, how precious it was, Mr. Tommy, for you and your family when you finally got Valerie back home. And not have to drive an hour and a half, two hours, and for them to only tell you, you can't come in right now, and you can't see her. I, I can only imagine how precious it was to be able to sit there and hold her hand, and Frank, for her to be able to pick on you about going bald, and, and uh, I believe now she'd come back from heaven, she'd have some more things she'd tell you. And uh, I think about, uh, I, I, I can't help but think about Colby if uh, she'd probably one more time tell you to go play in traffic. <laughs> but how precious that would be. But she's home. It's precious to the Lord because she's home. And then lastly, her going home to be with the Lord is precious because the promise of the resurrection. I want to read to you a lengthy portion of scripture, six verses out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I want you to listen very closely to the word of God. The Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18 closes with this. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Miss Beth, I was thinking about this yesterday and even this morning. So I looked at the pictures and seen the braces that sometimes Valerie would wear on her legs. and The wheelchair, sometimes the, the walker that help her walk. And, and I got thinking, you know, right now, the Bible teaches right now her soul is with the Lord. The Bible says this is just an earthly tabernacle. Later today, you'll go and you'll, the, the Bible explains it this way, you'll plant her in the ground. Do you understand when you plant something, you don't plant it there to stay, but you plant it because you expect it to come forth. And as a child of God, the Bible teaches that as we plant Valerie's earthly tabernacle on the ground, we plant it with the expectation, according to the promise of God's word, that she's coming forth again. Her body will be reunited. But here's the wonderful thing about it, Mr. Tommy. The Bible says that she'll have a house not made with hands. She'll have a glorified body. She'll never need braces again. She'll never need a walker. She'll never need a wheelchair. But can you imagine having a perfect body? You see, to you and I, we wrestle this morning with the emotion, with the sorrow, and with the brokenness. When the Bible says we sorrow not as others which have no hope, that doesn't mean that we don't sorrow. But it means our sorrow is different from those that we don't know where they are. According to Valerie's testimony, we know where she is. She's in the presence of her Lord and her Savior, Jesus Christ. The one whom, according to her own testimony, came to this earth to die for her. To bear her sin and his own body on the tree, the Bible says. Then they laid him in a ground, in a grave. But on the third day he rose again. And he did that for her. But he also did that for you and for me. I believe with all my heart if Valerie could come and she was only allowed just to speak for a brief moment, I believe here's what she would say. 
she would beg and plead with us, accept Christ. Realize that he died for our sin. Realize that he paid the price so that you can be saved and have eternal life and spend eternity with him in glory. I believe she would say, you too, why don't you come home with me? I want to ask you, will you bow your heads with me this morning? Your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'm going to pray in just a moment, but I want you to know this. I believe Valerie would want me to tell you this. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, she would want you to know him. She would want you to call upon his name. You may be here today and you say, Preacher, how, how does one do that? Well, you just would simply pray any way that you could, the best way you know how. And you may would just simply say, Dear Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you. But I believe that you came to this world and you died for me just like you died for Valerie. I believe that you were buried and you rose again for me. The best way I know how, I just ask you, will you forgive me of my sins? Will you be my Savior? Will you prepare me a home in heaven? God, will you save me? Friend, I want you to know upon the authority of God's word, if you'll call upon him, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will give you the same thing that he gave Valerie if you'll just accept his son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. Lord, the best way that I knew how, I tried to honor Valerie. And Lord, I've tried to honor you. God, I've tried to speak words of comfort and words of hope to the family. But God, I ask you, would you comfort them as only you can? Lord, would you just help them today and in the days ahead? Lord, would you give them a peace which passeth all understanding, a peace which only you can give? God, I pray that if there be somebody here today that they've never placed their faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, they've never made that personal decision I pray that before this day is over that they would find a place and just get alone with you and just simply call upon you for salvation now Lord I ask you God would you take your arms of love and comfort and Lord would you wrap them around this family God would you give them strength to get through the rest of this day Lord, would you help them to understand Valerie's in no more pain. She's not hurting any longer. But God, she's resting in peace with you. And we thank you for that. I ask you now to bless as we dismiss. Give a safe trip to the cemetery. And I pray that you would, Lord, receive honor and glory through that service. We'll praise you for what you do now in Jesus' name. Amen.